Carl Alois zu Fürstenberg, the 26th of June 1760 to the 25th of March 1799, was an Austrian military commander. He achieved the rank of field marshal and died at the Battle of Stockach. The third son of a cadet branch of the House of Fürstenberg, at his birth his chances of inheriting the family title of First zu Fürstenberg were slight. He was prepared instead for a military career and a tutor was hired to teach him the military sciences. He entered the Habsburg military in 1777, at the age of 17 years, and was a member of the field army in the Short War of the Bavarian Succession 1778 His career progressed steadily during the Habsburg War with the Ottoman Empire. In particular he distinguished himself at Sabak in 1790, when he led his troops in storming the fortress on the Sava River. During the French Revolutionary Wars, he fought with distinction again for the First Coalition, particularly at Ketch and Froschwiller, and in 1796 at Emmendingen, Schlingen and Kell. He was stationed at key points to protect the movements of the Austrian army. With a force of 10,000, he defended the German Rhineland at Kell, and reversed a bayonet assault by French troops at Belheim. His troops also overran Speyer without any losses. By the end of the War of the First Coalition, at the age of 35, he had achieved the rank of Field Marshal. During the War of the Second Coalition, he fought in the first two battles of the German campaign, at Ostrich on 21 March 1799, and at Stockach on 25 March 1799. At the latter action while leading a regiment of Grenadier, he was hit by French case shot and knocked off his horse. He died shortly afterward. Topic. Childhood and early military training As the third son of a cadet junior branch of the Furstenberg princely family, Karl Alois was prepared for a military career. His tutor, Lieutenant Ernst, was in active service in the Habsburg military, and took six-year-old Karl Alois on maneuvers with him. In this way, he learned as a child the Habsburg military manual, and came into contact with important military men who later furthered his education and career. He also acquired an honorary rank as Kreis Obristen, or Colonel of the Imperial Circle, by the time he was ten years old. As a youth, in 1776, he met the Habsburg War Minister Count Franz Moritz von Lacy and Baron Ernst Gideon von Laden. He was also invited to dine with Emperor Joseph II. He started his service in 1777 as a Fonrich in the Habsburg military organization. He saw his first field service during the War of the Bavarian Succession 1777-78, although he was not involved in any battles, in 1780, at the age of 20 years, he was promoted to captain, and assigned to the 34th Infantry Regiment, also known as the Anton Esterhazy, named for Paul II Anton Esterhazy, the General of Cavalry, Field Marshal of the Seven Years' War, and Ambassador to Britain. While he was assigned to this unit, he participated in the border conflicts between the Ottoman Empire and the Habsburgs, 1787–92, and stormed the fortress at Sabak German, Shabitz, on the Sava River in Serbia on 27 April 1788. For his action at Sabak, he was personally commended by the Emperor. On the following day, he was promoted to major and given command of a grenadier battalion. On 1 January 1790, at Laden's explicit request, Karl Alois zu Fürstenberg was promoted to major general. At the end of June of that year, he received the coveted position of second colonel of the 34th Infantry Regiment Anton Esterhazy, where he served as the executive officer for Antal, Prince Esterhazy de Galantha, the 34th Hungarian Regiment's colonel and proprietor. Theater. This was a customary appointment in which a less prominent officer completed the day-to-day -day administrative duties of the colonel and proprietor, who was usually a noble and was often posted in a different assignment, sometimes a different staff location. Karl Alois zu Fürstenberg also received the Confraternal Order of St. Hubert from the Duke of Bavaria and married the elegant. Princess Elizabeth of Thurn und Taxis that year. Fight against revolutionary France While Karl Alois zu Fürstenberg fought for the Habsburg cause in Serbia, in France, a coalition of the clergy and the professional and bourgeois class—the first and third estates—led a call for reform of the French government and the creation of a written constitution. Initially, the rulers of Europe viewed the French Revolution as an event between the French king and his subjects, and not something in which they should interfere. 
In 1790, Leopold succeeded his brother Joseph as emperor and by 1791, he considered the situation surrounding his sister, Marie Antoinette, and her children, with greater alarm. In August 1791, in consultation with French émigré nobles and Frederick William II of Prussia, he issued the Declaration of Pilnitz, in which they declared the interest of the monarchs of Europe as one with the interests of Louis XVI and his family. They threatened ambiguous, but quite serious, consequences if anything should happen to the royal family. The French émigrés continued to agitate for support of a counter-revolution. On 20 April 1792, the French National Convention declared war on Austria. In the War of the First Coalition 1792 France opposed most of the European states sharing land or water borders with her, plus Portugal and the Ottoman Empire. War of the First Coalition In the early days of the French Revolutionary Wars, Karl Alois zu Fürstenberg remained as brigade commander of a small Austrian corps, approximately 10,000 men, under the overall command of Anton, Prince Esterhazy. He was stationed in the Breigau, a Habsburg territory between the Black Forest and the Rhine. This location between the forested mountains and the river included two important bridgeheads across the river which offered access to southwestern Germany, the Swiss cantons, or north-central Germany. His brigade defended Kell, a small village immediately across the Rhine from Strasbourg, but most of the action in 1792 occurred further north, in present-day Belgium, near the cities of Speyer and Trier, and at Frankfurt on the main river. In the second year of the war, Fürstenberg was transferred to the cavalry of Dagobert Sigmund von Wormser, in the army of the Upper Rhine, and placed in charge of the advance guard near Speyer, which was still held by the French. On 30 March, he crossed the Rhine by Ketch at the head of the advance guard, which included 9,000 men. He took the city of Speyer on 1 April, in the absence of the commander of the city, Adam Philippe de Custine, who was away with most of his troops, those that remained behind simply abandoned the city. On the following day, Fürstenberg occupied the town of Germersheim. His first combat action of the war occurred on 3 April, when Custine's infantry attacked him in a bayonet charge near the villages of Belheim, Hort and Leimersheim, and afterward at Landau and Lauterburg. During these attacks, he lost all the ground he had gained in the days before. After these events, he was again transferred, this time to the command of the regiment Count von Kavanaugh, where he continued to distinguish himself during the French counter-offensive of October to November 1793. In the action around Geidertheim, on the Zorn River, he assisted Lieutenant Field Marshal Gabriel Anton, Baron Splany de Mahaldi, in repelling a French counterattack. Shortly afterward, he became very ill and, in December 1793, was sent to the Haganah to recover. On the 22nd of December, he rejoined Wormser's corps for the Battle of Froschwiller against Lazare Hotch and Charles Pichegru. After the French retreated over the Rhine at Huntingen, near Basel, he directed the construction of its new fortifications. In June 1796, Fürstenberg commanded a division of four infantry battalions, 13 artillery pieces, and the Freikorps volunteers Gule and secured the Rhine corridor between Kell and Rastatt. On 26 June 1796, the French troops of the Army of the Rhine and Moselle crossed the Rhine and chased the Swabian Circle's military contingent out of Kell. In June 1796, Archduke Charles added the contingent to Fürstenberg's command, making him the Swabians Feldzugmeister, or General of Infantry. Fürstenberg's troops defended the Imperial Line at the town of Rastatt until support troops arrived, and they could make an orderly withdrawal into the upper Danube Valley. The Swabian contingent was demobilized in July, and Fürstenberg returned to the command of Austrian regulars during the Austrian counter-offensive. At the Battle of Emmendingen on 19 October 1796, his leadership was again instrumental in an Austrian victory. General Jean Victor Marie Moreau's Army of the Rhine and Moselle sought to retain a foothold on the eastern side of the Rhine, following his retreat from southwestern Germany west of the Black Forest. Fürstenberg held Kensingen, 2.5 miles 4 kilometers north of Regal on the Els River. Karl Alois zu Fürstenberg was ordered to feint against Riegel, to protect the primary Austrian positions at Rust and Kappel. In the Battle of Schlingen the 24th of October 1796, Fürstenberg commanded the second column of the Austrian force, which included nine battalions of infantry and thirty squadrons of cavalry. With these, he overwhelmed the force of General of Division Gauvion Saint-Cyr, holding his position to prevent the French force from retreating north on the Rhine. 
while Maximilian Anton Karl, Count Bailet de la Tour, engaged the main Austrian force at Kell, Archduke Charles entrusted to Lieutenant Field Marshal Fersenberg the command of the forces besieging Hunningen, which included two divisions with 20 battalions of infantry and 40 squadrons of cavalry. Charles's confidence in his young field marshal was well placed. On 27 November, Fersenberg's chief engineer opened and drained the water-filled moat protecting the French fortifications. Fersenberg offered the commander of the bridgehead, General of Brigade Jean Charles Abitucci, the opportunity to surrender, which he declined. In the night of 30 November to 1 December, Fersenberg's force stormed the bridgehead twice, but was twice repulsed. In one of these attacks, the French commander was mortally wounded and died on 3 December. Fersenberg maintained the siege of Kell while Archduke Charles engaged the stronger French force to the north of Kell. After the French capitulation at Kell, the 10th of January 1797, Fersenberg received additional forces with which he could end the siege at Huntingen. He ordered the reinforcement of the ring of soldiers surrounding Huntingen and on the 2nd of February 1797, the Austrians prepared to storm the bridgehead. General of Division Georges Joseph Dufour, the new French commander, pre-empted what would have been a costly attack, by offering to surrender the bridge. On 5 February, Fersenberg finally took possession of the bridgehead. Francis II, the Holy Roman Emperor, appointed him as colonel and proprietor of the 36th Infantry Regiment, which bore his name until his death in battle in 1799. Peace. The coalition forces—Austria, Russia, Prussia, Great Britain, Sardinia, among others—achieved several victories at Verdun, Kaiserslautern, Neerwinden, Mainz, Amberg and Würzburg, but in northern Italy, they could neither lift nor escape the siege at Mantua. The efforts of Napoleon Bonaparte in northern Italy pushed Austrian forces to the border of Habsburg lands. Napoleon dictated a ceasefire at Lieben on 17 April 1797, leading to the formal Treaty of Campo Formio, which went into effect on 17 October 1797. Austria withdrew from the territories the army had fought so hard to acquire, including the strategic river crossings at Huntingen and Kell, as well as key cities further north. When the war ended, Fersenberg stayed at the Donaushingen estate of his cousin, Karl Joachim Alois, who had recently inherited the family title as First Zoo Fersenberg. Later in 1797, he travelled to Prague and remained with his family until May 1798, when he received a posting to a new division in Linz. His daughter, Maria Anna, was born after he left, on 17 September 1798. <inaudible> <inaudible> Activities in the Second Coalition Despite the longed for peace, tensions grew between France and most of the First Coalition allies, either separately or jointly. Ferdinand IV of Naples refused to pay agreed upon tribute to France, and his subjects followed this refusal with a rebellion. The French invaded Naples and established the Parthenopean Republic. A republican uprising in the Swiss cantons, encouraged by the French Republic which offered military support, led to the overthrow of the Swiss Confederation and the establishment of the Helvetic Republic. On his way to Egypt in spring 1798, Napoleon had stopped on the island of Malta and removed the hospitallers from their possessions. This angered Paul, Tsar of Russia, who was the honorary head of the order. The ongoing French occupation of Malta angered the British, who dedicated themselves to ejecting the French garrison at Valletta. The French Directory was convinced that the Austrians were conniving to start another war. Indeed, the weaker the French Republic seemed, the more seriously the Austrians, the Neapolitans, the Russians, and the British actually discussed this possibility. As winter broke on 1 March 1799, General Jean-Baptiste Jordan and his 25,000-man army of the Danube crossed the Rhine at Kell. The army of the Danube met little resistance as it advanced through the Black Forest and eventually took a flanking position on the north shore of Lake Constance. Instructed to block the Austrians from access to the Swiss Alpine passes, Jordan planned to isolate the armies of the coalition in Germany from allies in northern Italy, and prevent them from assisting one another. His was a preemptive strike. By crossing the Rhine in early March, Jordan acted before Archduke Charles's army could be reinforced by Austria's Russian allies, who had agreed to send 60,000 seasoned soldiers and their more seasoned commander, Generalissimo Alexander Suvorov. 
Furthermore, if the French held the interior passes in Switzerland, they could not only prevent the Austrians from transferring troops between northern Italy and southwestern Germany, but could use the routes to move their own forces between the two theatres. Battle of Austric At the outbreak of hostilities in March 1799, Karl Alois zu Fürstenberg was with his troops in Bavarian territory, just north of the free and imperial city of Augsburg. When news reached the Austrian camp that the French had crossed the Rhine, Charles ordered the imperial army to advance west. Fürstenberg moved his troops toward Augsburg, crossing the Lech River. The French advanced guard arrived in Austrich on 8 9 March, and over the next week skirmished with the Austrian forward posts, while the rest of the French army arrived. Jordan disposed his 25,000 troops along a line from Salem Abbey and Lake Constance to the Danube River, centered in Austrich. He established his command headquarters at the imperial city of Fullendorf, overlooking the entire Austrich Valley. Jordan was expecting Dominique Van Damme's troops to arrive in time to support his far north flank near the river, but Van Damme had gone to Stuttgart to investigate a rumoured presence of Austrian troops there and had not rejoined the main army. Consequently, the French left flank, under command of Gauvion Saint Cyr, was thinly manned. Jordan thought he had more time, expecting Charles would need still three or four days to move his troops across the Lech, and march to Austrich, but by the middle of Holy Week in 1799, more than a third of Charles's army, 48,000 mixed troops, was positioned in a formation parallel to Jordan's, and his 72,000 remaining troops were arrayed with the left wing at Kempton, the centre near Memmingen, and the right flank extended to Ulm. By 21 March, the French and Austrian outposts overlapped, and skirmishing intensified. Charles had divided his force into four columns. Fürstenberg covered the northern flank of the Archduke's main force. Fürstenberg's force pushed the French out of Davidsweiler, and then advanced on Rupperswiler and Einhard, five kilometres three miles to the northwest of Austrich. St. Cyr did not have the manpower to defend the position, and the entire line fell back to Austrich, with Fürstenberg's troops pressuring their withdrawal. Fürstenberg's persistent pressure on the French left flank was instrumental in the collapse of the northern part of the French line. After their success in driving the French back from Austrich, and then from the heights of Fullendorf, the Austrian forces continued to press the French back to Stockach, and then another five miles or so to Ingen. <laughs> Death at the Battle of Stockach 1799. On the morning of what they suspected would be the general engagement, Karl Alois zu Fürstenberg sought out the field chaplain, and requested the sacraments because, as he told his aide, anything can happen during a battle. Although Austrich had been a hard-fought battle, at Ingen and Stockach, the Austrian and French forces were far more concentrated—more men in a smaller space—than they had been at Austrich, where the French forces in particular had been stretched thinly on a long line from Lake Constance to north of the Danube. At Stockach, furthermore, Jordan had all his troops under his direct control, with the possible exception of Dominique Van Damme, who was maneuvering his small force of cavalry and light infantry into position to attempt a flanking action on the far right Austrian flank. In the course of the battle, Jordan's forces were supposed to engage in simultaneous attacks on the left, center, and right of the Austrian line. On the French right, Solom's and Farino's corps met with strong resistance and were stopped. On the French left, Lefebvre's troops charged with such force that the Austrians were pushed back. Having stopped Solom's and Farino's assault, Charles had troops available to counter Lefebvre's force. At that point, Van Damme's men moved into action. Because Solom's assault at the centre had been stalled, Charles still had enough men to turn part of his force to fight this new threat, but the Austrians were hard pressed and the action furious. At one point, Charles attempted to lead his eight battalions of Hungarian grenadier into action, to the dismay of the old soldiers. Fürstenberg reportedly said that while he lived, he would not leave this post at the head of the grenadier and the archduke should not dismount and fight. As Fürstenberg led the Hungarian grenadier into the battle, he was cut down by a canister and case shot employed by the French. Although he was carried alive off the field, he died almost immediately. Charles ultimately did lead his grenadier into battle, and reportedly his personal bravery rallied his troops to push back the French. 
After the battle, someone removed Fersenberg's wedding ring and returned it to his wife in Prague. With news of his death, Fersenberg was buried at the battlefield cemetery in Stockach, and his cousin erected a small monument there. But in 1857, his body was moved to the family cemetery, Maria Hof at Nudigen, near Donaushingen. Family Upon the death of Prosper Ferdinand, Count Fersenberg, in the War of the Spanish Succession, in 1704 the Fersenberg inheritance was divided between the Count's two youngest sons, Joseph Wilhelm Ernst and Wilhelm Egan, the eldest son was an ecclesiastic. The family of Fersenberg was raised to princely status 2 February 1716, with the elevation of Joseph Wilhelm Ernst, as the first prince first of Fersenberg German, first zu Fersenberg. The first prince had three sons, Joseph Wenzel Johann Nepomuk (1728–1783), Karl Borromeus Egan (1729–1787), and Prosper Maria, who died in infancy. The title passed through the line of the first son, Joseph Wenzel Johann Nepomuk as second prince, to his son Joseph Maria Benedict Karl third prince, who died in 1796 and then to another son of the second prince, Karl Joachim Alois fourth prince. The last son of Joseph Wilhelm Ernst died in 1803 without male issue. Consequently, the title passed to the male line of first prince's second son. This son, Karl Borromeus Egan, had died in 1787. Karl Borromeus Egan's oldest son, Joseph Maria Wenzel, the 16th of August 1754 to the 14th of July 1759, died as a small child. The second son, Philip Nereus Maria, Prague, the 21st of October 1755 to the 5th of June 1790, married in 1779 to his first cousin, Josepha Johanna Benedicta von Fürstenberg, sister of the third and fourth princes at Donaueschingen. Only one of their sons survived childhood, but died at the age of 15 years. The other children of this second son were all daughters, and thus not eligible to inherit the title Prince of Fürstenberg. Consequently, the title devolved to the agnatic male descendants of Karl Alois zu Fürstenberg. In 1803, two of Karl Alois zu Fürstenberg's children were still living. Karl Egan, as the surviving son, inherited the title Prince of Fürstenberg. He and his eldest sister lived into adulthood and produced families. Children of Karl Alois zu Fürstenberg and Elizabeth, Princess of Thurn und Taxis, were Marie Leopoldini, Prague, the 4th of September 1791, Kupferzel, the 10th of January 1844, married at Heiligenberg, the 20th of May 1813 to Charles Albert III, Prince of Hohenlohe Waldenberg Schillingsfürst, Vienna, the 29th of February 1776, Bad Mergentheim, the 15th of June 1843. Maria Josepha, the 9th of September 1792. Antony, the 28th of October 1794 to the 1st of October 1799. Karl Egan II, Prague, the 28th of October 1796, Bad Ischl, the 22nd of October 1854, succeeded his cousin Joachim as the fifth first zu Fürstenberg on the 17th of May 1804. He married on the 19th of April 1818 to Amelie Christine Caroline of Baden, Karlsruhe, the 26th of January 1795, Karlsruhe, the 14th of September 1869. Maria Anna, the 17th of September 1798 to the 18th of July 1799. 